Right, so here we go, Stitch Club. A little video just to remind you how to use Bonderweb, or if you've never used Bonderweb before, just exactly how to use it. It's one of those things where you just need to know the process. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. We're going to use it on this week's project um, where I've done a little bit of applique here, the heart on the cushion. Um, but it's such a versatile technique, it's really worth uh, uh, learning. Even if you're a complete beginner, something like this, a cushion with somebody's initial on it or something, so easy to do, uh, especially with Bondweb because you can trace out, oh, there's a whole collection of them, different letters. You can also do your own design. So here's something in the process um, where I've literally drawn those shapes and figures and things like that and then stitched them on. And as I say, it's such a satisfying technique. Um, whether you're, let's get those out of the way, whether you're into quilting, home furnishings, dressmaking, I use it a fair bit on dressmaking as well if I want to put a little something on around the border of a skirt or something like that. So anyway, that's kind of what you can do with it. Let's just go to the technique. So Bonderweb, here we go. Um, there are a couple of different names out there. Um, Heat and Bond and, oh, there's another one, I can't remember it. Um, but basically what it is, it's fabric glue that is on paper okay so one side of this is actually smooth and papery and the other side you can feel it's rough that is the gluey side both sides will glue but you need to peel the paper off to get to that bit but i'll show you that later okay so just remember always the rough side is the gluey side because when it comes into contact with an iron you need to know which side is actually going to stick um, and I'm saying that because my one of one of my many ironing boards, I seem to break them quite regularly. Um, now they go in and out of cars. One of my ironing boards had a little bunny rabbit stuck to it for years because I forgot which side the bond web was on. Um, so yeah, lesson learned reminded me every time I looked at the ironing board. So the first thing you need to do is get your design. So say we were going to do something as simple as a heart, for example, I can then take a piece of Bonderweb and lay it over my shape and draw it onto the Bonderweb, okay? Don't use anything that's going to disappear, like a friction pen, because you're going to iron this, so as soon as you iron it, it will go. Um, so use something like a pencil or even a biro or something like that. OK, do it onto with a shape like this. I tend to do it onto the papery side. If it is a shape that has a wrong and a right direction, if you want something facing a certain way, do remember you're going to have to mirror it. So, for example, um, and this is bizarre because I'm showing this and I think this may come out, come out the wrong way around for you because of the way the camera works. But with a letter like a P, for example, if I draw the letter out as it should be, when I actually trace it on the bond web, instead of tracing it on so it looks the same, I would trace it on to the other side, which is the rough side here, the gluey side, so that when I come to putting it down, it's going to be the mirror image that I'm looking for. OK, so that's something particularly with lettering to remember um, that you need to actually do that. We'll probably come back to that and do lettering on, on something further down the line, because as I say, this is a technique that's worth going over. And there are various ways that you can actually finish the technique on the sewing machine. OK, so here's the colour I'm going to do. Um, some leaves for example so I've got my fabric here um, and I want the wrong side of the fabric I've drawn my leaves out I don't know if you can see those I've put loads of them as close together as I can but I have left a gap around each one of these and when you're doing that do make sure like here that you've left almost like a seam allowance I suppose around it because when you've ironed it on, you're then going to cut it out and, oops, sorry, drop that. Um, and if you 
don't leave that seam allowance you're in danger of making of getting the glue not going right up to the edge okay so it's much much easier and you get a much sharper edge to it as well if you actually do that I'm, I'm going to iron this I'm not going to make the mistake of moving the phone or the camera stand so I'm afraid you'll just have to imagine I've got a little ironing board down here and I've just ironed it look there it is okay so you'll see it almost change color and you'll know that it's now stuck okay but you've still got that papery side one thing I would say when you're doing that process piece of greaseproof paper or baking parchment or something over the top just to protect your iron just in case okay and it's also worth putting it underneath this is smaller than the fabric if that had been laying across so for example like this so the bond web was coming over that would have stuck to my ironing board okay so you can put grease proof underneath and on the top as well just as a double whammy of protection because it does make a bit of a mess okay so once you've got to that point you can then cut right up to the line so i'm just going to cut one leaf out okay so I've now cut my leaf out. It's not a very neat shaped leaf, is it? But anyway, they're not very neat necessarily. Still got the paper on the back. Okay, I'm going to use this little heart that I've done earlier because it's slightly bigger. So once you get to this point, we need to now get this paper off. So best way to do it is to just take a pin or scissors or something and just score a line and give it a little shape like that and then look that whole thing peels off very satisfying okay and then on the back here this should feel almost rubbery and that is the glue okay so once you've got to that point you can then press it wherever you like onto your main fabric so you can lay your design out so say you were doing loads of hearts or flowers or something like that you can lay it out, make sure it's in the right place before you then press each piece into place. OK, if by any chance you press it and it's in the wrong place, press it again for about another 10 seconds or something, and it should be enough for you to then lift it back off. OK, um, try not to, uh, you know, but like I say, actually place it when you're on the ironing board them in the right position and then very carefully just 